Hey guys, welcome back to Team APS Plus. So in case you've been living under a rock, a ban list did drop the other day. And the reason I actually didn't do a video about it sooner was because I was at Anime NYC this past weekend and had some fiascos with uh, traveling back. And so I was very tired on Monday when this list came out and I was like, this is great and all, but I'm going to sleep. So I'm here now to share my thoughts on it. And um, I figure, well, since it's honestly too late to like clickbait and be like, oh my God, it's my initial reactions instead. We're just going to sort of examine it, and then I want to ask you guys some questions about it. Uh, you know, whether or not this is the type of ban list that you like, the type of ban list that, you know, Konami needs to do more of or less of, and things like that. So, you know, the fun existential things that we worry about here on Team APS+. Plus. Now, before we get into that, I do have to do a quick plug for eWin Racing, the company that actually sent me this really cool gaming chair. If you guys want, you can pick one up for yourself over on their website. If you use the code TEAMAPS, you'll get 30% off. So that's for any gaming chair. This is just one of the many different designs, but they come in loads of different colors, sizes for people of different heights and weights. And they even have this really cool lower lumbar support pillow that I've been using and quite enjoying myself. So yeah, it's uh, kind of a Black Friday thing. If you want it, it's a really great gift. Perhaps if you were in the market for a gaming chair for yourself, it could also be a really great pickup. So head on over to there. Links down in the description. Use the code TEAMAPS. You get 30% off. All right, now let's hop into this ban list, shall we? Okay, so we've got this pulled up over on Master Duel Meta, even though it's the TCG ban list. I just like that I can hover over these cards and have all these cool effects show up for you guys. So um, we'll start off with the banned cards because I think that's where a lot of the conversation is with this. Um, Mystic Mine. It's banned, and I couldn't be happier. I'm not really a big fan of this card. You guys kind of already know this. Now, I have said recently that I thought Konami was just never really going to ban this card because it seems like when the outcry was even at its like peak, Konami still did not ban the card. So Mystic Mind is finally gone, and it's a pleasant surprise. Um, there's not a lot to say about it that hasn't been said before. People do not like this card. It feels very uninteractive and you know drives the game to a halt. And I do think that the negative publicity that this card gave to the game, like, you know, people joke about mine a lot, but, like, there were feature matches where it was just, you know, bringing the game, you know, to a halt, and, like, players couldn't play, and it was happening in the finals, and it was used by stall burn control decks, and, like, crazy combo FTK, to, any deck could just throw a Mystic Mine in, and it wasn't good done. So the card's gone, and that puts us on parity, as you guys can see here, with the OCG, because they also have it banned, so... No more missing mine, great. Now another card that got banned is Curious the Lightsworn Dominion. It's an interesting one because um, I think it's fine to ban the card. What it was typically used for, at least to my knowledge, was it was a great way to send spells and trap cards from your deck to the graveyard, or rather, you know, one specific card. And then you could use something like Nightmare Griffin to set the card from your graveyard to your field. So you could send a Floodgate like Summon Limit or Anti-Spell Fragrance, or, you know, even a long time ago, like Imperial Order. And so um, that was always a really strong thing. And I think that it's just sort of the type of card that, eh, you know, it, it's sort of an exploitable one. It's a link monster, so it's never really hard to make this. And yeah, now it feels a little bit like a dated hit since this card isn't really used in the current best deck, which is, you know, a Shizu tier. Um, this was kind of like more of a thing with like the punk pile adventure decks and stuff like that. That's kind of what I associate it with. So this feels like it's a bit of a behind the curve hit from Konami, but I suppose you can't complain. I don't think there's like any one person who needed this card or something like that. And it's going to be sad to see it go. It was definitely like a combo pile deck tool and not much else. So maybe there's a light sword player crying somewhere. All right, let's talk about the limited cards or card. Um, Herald of Orange Light. So it's an interesting one. Um, I guess I should just spoil it now in case you didn't know somehow. This list does not actually directly hit the Ishizu Tarlowin's deck like some people might have thought it would. Um, but it does use cards or hits like this to sort of act as a bit of a slap on the wrist, I suppose. So you guys know that Herald is the card that negates monster effects by sending itself another fairy from your hand to the GY. Um, this certainly gave the... Tierleman's deck a lot of defensive power. It meant that even if you did have, you know, the one thing you needed to stop them, like maybe a dimension shifter or something, something like it, maybe, you know, Cyframe, Gamma, whatever crucial critical card, they would have a way to deal with it. And it's kind of a weird hit to me, I guess, because like, I don't think a lot of people describe Herald of Orange Light as like the problem 
that the tear causes. There's plenty of other things like habness that come to mind and that sort of stuff. But uh, I think Konami just scraped the bottom of the barrel to find any non Ishizu tier um, bestial type of card because they're also new that they could hit. And this is, I guess, what came out of it. So, uh, yeah, it's at one. It was at one in the OCG too, apparently. So I, I guess some parity there does not help uh, or does not hurt. It, I mean, it doesn't help. I don't know. But yeah, this is interesting. It does weaken the deck. I don't think it really like puts the deck out of contention in any way, but I guess less defensive capabilities means it might be a little bit easier to interact with the tier deck. All right. Next, we get Lyra Lusk Recital Starling to two. So this is a card that's been pretty popular in like the bird up sort of deck with like the Wing Beast, the Lyra Lusk, the Tri Brigades. Um, it can add Wing Beast monsters, a level one monster from your deck to your hand. I think that there's an FTK that's enabled by this card being at two. At least that's what I read online. I'm not a real expert on it, so you guys can fill me in if you think there's like a big problem or not. But I think that as far as that deck goes, it probably won't be like super duper relevant. I mean, like a Shizu tier, it just feels like it really dwarfs most of the competition. So, uh, eh. it might be nice though to see the idea of like a, a higher tier deck that isn't using like light and dark monsters. So that kind of cut the bestial part out of the equation and maybe like that helps to balance things out a little bit. Or that might be just, you know, wishful thinking. But anyways, okay, now we've got a bunch of unlimited cards. So first up is uh, Teller Knight Ptolemaeus. This is one that's been on the ban list for a really long time, and I'm honestly surprised it didn't come back sooner than now. But uh, as you guys know, it can use its own effect to detach three Xyz materials and then summon uh, an Xyz monster that's one rank higher than this card. Um, this is pretty neat. So you can use two or more level four monsters to make it, but if you want to use that effect, you're going to mostly want to be using three it has other ways to like get stuff for material but a lot of the extra effects don't really come up it's mainly going to be used to summon well any number of cards you can make cyber dragon infinity if you want uh, you just have to like rank this up into nova and then turn that into infinity but the card that's maybe a little bit more popular that a lot of people want to use with this is um hold up i got it pulled up right here is stellar knight uh constellar diamond which let me zoom in on this thing is not very big yeah so um this thing basically you can exes summon it over like a teller knight exes monster but that's only in main phase two with the power of telemaeus you can just summon this on your very first turn and um while it has exes material neither player can send cards from the deck to the graveyard and any card that returns from the graveyard of the hand is banished instead also it can negate dark monsters effects by detaching so that's pretty neat too this is a really strong floodgate against the tier deck and i think that the fact that almost any deck can use it since it's just like a matter of having, you know, level four monsters. This might have been Konami's sort of way of saying, like, here, here's something to kind of help you with the tier matchup, everybody. Will it make a huge difference? I'm not really sure. Something that does worry me a little bit about it, though, is the fact that the tier deck can also use this. So this could just be, like, a really strong shutout card in the mirror match, like, if you go first or something. But, um, who knows? I don't know. I'm not super experienced with the tier deck, so like I'm not going to you know sit here and pretend I know how this is all going to go, but it's nice to see this old card coming off the list. And there's some cool shenanigans you can do even outside of that play, like the Infinity thing, for instance. Next is we get Dimensional Fissure and Macro Cosmos both back to three. So this is pretty huge. Um, Dimensional Fissure and Macro Cosmos are cards that basically banish things. Um, this banishes any monster. This just banishes any card. There are some slight ruling differences between these two cards that are sort of noteworthy, like um, hand traps and certain like mill effects can activate under Macro Cosmos, but can't activate under Dimensional Fissure because like it specifically says monsters that would be sent will be banished, whereas this says just cards get banished. Um, this can also be hit with Ash Blossom, for instance, or even like Solemn Morning. So, you know, this card can't. I think that these will mostly be used in, you know, a lot of your average kind of control stun decks. Um, I could see maybe like a Sky Striker deck wanting to use Dimensional Fissure to some extent. It's a little bit risky. I know Fluanderies are the main thing that everybody's thinking about. And this card to me is a great supplement to Dimension Shifter, which is kind of the, the hot thing on the block right now because everyone's like, okay, you have to use Shifter to deal with Tier. But I don't think that Dimension Shifter is like an auto win against Tier. They can oftentimes withstand it and then, you know, continue to play the next turn if you don't kill them immediately. And so I think that having a more permanent fix for that is really cool. That said, though, I know that these cards can be very annoying for like the average deck, the lower tier kind of graveyard reliant deck to play against Macrocosmos and Deep Fissure can. So I do worry maybe what that means, but... uh. I guess this is another one of these like anti-tier things that Konami is giving us. So here, this is the bone you get. 
Fire Formation Tinkies at three again. This is pretty cool. I know this card really just jumps all around the ban list, so maybe it'll end up at two or one again sometime in the future when they make the next Beast Warrior deck. But for now, this is really cool. I think in tandem with Recital Starling, it could mean a resurgence of the Tri Brigade Lyralusk deck. And I don't know if that's strong enough to beat tier, but I've never really seen this card as something that needed to be at like two. So being at three is cool. And then Metaverse is at three now because mainly Mystic Mind got banned. So the need for Metaverse to really be limited feels like it's not really like a thing. So yeah. All right, that's the list. Now, um, a couple of extra thoughts because the list is the list. You guys have kind of formed your thoughts on it. It is what it is. Is it um, the best list in the world? I don't really think so. I think people would have just preferred that maybe like Tear Havness got hit or something like that, right? Um, or maybe some of these Shizu cards. But it's the one that we got. And um, if I had to give it a rating, I would say like it's like a 6 out of 10. It's neat. I just I don't think it's really solving problems. There's not a lot that's exciting about it either. I kind of miss the times when we were getting like you know, retro cards off the list to play around with. We do get, like, a, a banned card off, so that's cool, but... And I know it hits the Mystic Mind that everybody's been complaining about. I guess my main thing with this list is that it feels, much like the list before it, a little bit dated. It's like a list that's, like, kind of three months too late, because the Mystic Mind hate had kind of died down, and um, it just sort of... And, like, Curious is not, like, a super relevant thing right now, so a little shocked to see cards like that on it. Um, maybe more importantly, though, this list is one that people are saying like it's an emergency ban list. I don't really think it is, but it's one that is hitting everything around tier if they that they can find because the sort of tier issues with bestial deck is really airtight, and all three of those archetypes or themes or whatever are new. And so I think that that's why Konami was like, "Hey, we're not going to hit this because it this is this is product that's like on the shelves right now and it's selling, so we're not going to hit it." And that's where we end up with these hits like Herald of Horns Light and like maybe these. Like, Ptolemaeus, Deep Fissure, Macro, like, maybe you could see those as, like, counterplay, you know, coming to three. Um, I, I just, I don't know. Like, do you guys like this sort of a list? This list that says, hey, we're not going to hit the big deck. Instead, we're just going to, like, give it a light tap on the wrist and give you tools to deal with it. There's something to be said about that. I mean, like, maybe you could argue that that's a more effective way of allowing the players a bit of control in their own destiny about how we deal with these decks. I don't know if I like it. I think that this is certainly not something that's going to, like, please the masses. But um, I suppose when you throw in, like, the Mystic Mind hit, it's 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 enough to make people happy. At least, you know, a YouTuber's thumbnail might make you think that, at least. So, uh, yeah. Um, weird list. Came sooner than I thought. So, there's that. Um, Anomaly does not usually come fast in this regard. Uh, yeah. What do you guys think about the list? Do you, are, are there, like, decks that you're excited to play? I don't think that anything becomes significantly, like, stronger outside of the, uh, Tri Brigade Lyralusk deck and maybe a weird stun thing, so you can have your fun with it. Um, yeah. All right, it's gonna be it. It's gone on long enough. Let me know what you guys think about it down in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. Fast turn.